Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the power, control and rebirth of those of you who have Pluto in your first house but also for those of you who have a Scorpio rising within your natal birth chart. But before we do get into this make sure that you give this video a like today if you like it also make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to click that little bell icon in order to keep yourself updated with further content from myself. And also if you would like to know more information all about your Pluto sign, your Pluto house, along with your Scorpio house and your eighth house within your natal birth chart, then I have created a Scorpio season slash archetype ebook. So what I am going to do is I'm going to provide a link to that ebook in the description box below so that you can pick up your copy today if you would like. Alright, so with all those introductions out of the way, Pluto in the first house and Scorpio rising individuals, let's do this. Okay, so if you have Pluto in your first house or a Scorpio rising, then what this suggests is that you have somewhat of a strong, powerful and magnetic presence about you. But also you can come across as somebody who is rather stealthy, yet focused and controlled even if you're quite silent and quiet. Though having said that, there can be a sense of charisma that comes with you as well. Though this is all very much a part of your charm. It's very much a part of your allure. However, it can also be suggested that you can be somebody who can appear kind of standoffish or defensive whenever going into or approaching a first encounter for example with somebody else or whenever you're entering into a new experience as another example you sort of you sort of have this demeanor or this aura this presence about you that says do not come near me unless i tell you to do not fuck with me <laughs> or you had better back up off me before you get too close to me or else. And if anybody invades your personal space or your privacy, you might be very, very quick on the trigger to tell that person where to take a hike. And you also may possess very little tolerance for slow people, shallow people, or for fake and phony people. And so in this respect, you'll most likely not waste your time on these types of people. And it could also be suggested that if you're in a committed relationship, for example, or a part of a friendship circle even, as another example, or by which you have decided that these are the people that you wish to associate with, or this is the person that you have chosen to be with, what you do is you focus so much of your energy and your time onto these individuals. Essentially, you don't like to waste your energy or your resources on people or situations that do not hold any intrinsic value or substance, because I mean, what's the point? So on that note, you're most likely going to live your life through a lens of depth. And also through a lens of establishing profound and meaningful memories, moments, experiences and relationships. And so anything short of that just will not cut it. Not to mention you can come across as very cutthroat in your approach as well. So for example, you might be fine with cutting someone else off during a conversation, especially if they are telling lies or if they are trying so hard to impress you or others with some BS story. Which by the way, you're most likely not one for forced attention or recognition. And if others try to make a show and a dance in order to grab your attention, you'll probably turn the other way. See, it's 
it's you, Pluto, in the first house who sees through all of the false stories. You see through the illusion and what you do instead is you dig deep into the inner world of others, right down into their psychology, into their hidden facets, and not to sound too out there, but down into their soul because you seek what is real and what is true. In fact, you might argue that so much above the surface is merely only a little tiny piece of a person. It is just a snippet. So an individual's physical appearance, for example, sure, yeah, you might be able to acknowledge that that woman looks hot or that that man has a certain sex appeal about him, but you want to you want to know what lies beyond these individuals. So what have they experienced? What have they seen? Are they kind-hearted individuals or should they be avoided at all costs? And where is there an exchange? And this right here is part of your par, Pluto in the first house of Scorpio rising individuals, because it's you who has the ability to investigate who humans are underneath their image, underneath their edited Instagram photos, underneath their makeup, underneath their flashy cars or their new high-end outfits. And it could also be suggested that you use your profound intuition to help you out. So you could get a strong or unsettling feeling about someone else and your insides are saying, danger, danger, alert, alert, something is up here. So what do I do? Do I run? Do I defend? Do I attack or do I climb under a rock? Or you can get this intense feeling about someone else that says, okay, yes, cool. I think that this could really go somewhere. And it's a very like passionate feeling and it feels accelerating and it's magnetic. So with that being said, these feelings may come up, but they don't have to just be in association with other people. But the same could also be said in association with jobs that you take, for example, or the type of home that you wish to live in. Also, which types of destinations that you wish to visit on vacation. Basically, your intuition leads your life, Pluto in the first house, Scorpio risings. Your ability to investigate and see what's beneath the surface is what leads your life forward. Though with that being said, let's actually take a look beneath the surface within yourselves. I know, I know you're probably extremely private people and you don't want me to pry or try to figure you out, but let's see how accurate my analysis is. So let's take you back to childhood. Is it possible that you grew up in an environment where you felt as if secrets were being kept from you left, right and centre? Such as secret affairs, secret exchanges of wealth and power and resources, secret health conditions or possibly even secret deaths or disappearances. Perhaps certain family members were even a part of a secret club or an organization or a society outside of the home. Or perhaps there was a secret language used between family members either as a way to protect your family from danger or as a way to protect you from being exposed to something disturbing. Maybe it was reinforced onto you the importance of keeping things private, keeping things very secretive as a way to protect others within your environment, possibly resulting in quite a tight and intimate bond between members. Though another possibility could be that you were exposed to death from a very young age, whether that be the death of a loved one or a friend, or whether that be death shown on the television screens within your environment. Maybe you were allowed to play violent video games from a pretty young age even. Or perhaps you developed a fascination with death and this could have came out through your physical appearance or through the activities that you like to do or take part in whilst you were growing up. Though to be fair, if it was that you lost a loved one due to death, maybe this completely and utterly transformed your life. So it really put things into perspective for you 
and it helped you see what and who truly matters in your life. And if this was the case, I can see why you would have little tolerance or patience for people who are all about their image, so to speak. Though another possibility could even be that you were exposed to acts of violence or acts of abuse as a child and these very experiences could have been rather traumatic for you or could have resulting it resulted in you wanting to hide away or even bottle things up or even possibly this could have been you falling into the wrong type of crowd whenever you were younger because the home life or the environment you grew up in was just very emotionally turbulent and so perhaps you you would kind of go out of that environment and find yourself in other environments that you thought you needed to feel safe but those same environments may have just been as chaotic and disruptive in a way. Though so another thing that could have taken place during your upbringing was emotional manipulation tactics such as lies being skillfully told to you about situations that you were probably too young to handle psychologically and emotionally could have been the divorce of your parents or again like i said death could have also been financial crisis though another tactic could have involved someone making you feel bad for bringing up certain information if it didn't make them feel comfortable or if a parent was in a bad mood then that meant that you had to be in a bad mood right along with them sort of feeding into the whole power play dynamics or quite possibly this could have been a relative or a parent one upping you emotionally so if you felt happy or sad about something then they would come along and diminish your feelings by proclaiming that theirs were stronger or greater this could have very well been that there was a domineering parent within the environment or a parent who was controlling and demanding of other people's time and energy, either for better or for worse. On the other hand, perhaps it was someone who knew exactly what buttons to push as a way to get you emotionally riled up or as a way to get under your skin, right where it hurts. They kind of toyed with your emotions and they sort of internally tortured you. Then again it could have been a situation where there were power struggles playing out between your parents where there was a lot of fighting or there was a lot of stubborn like I'm right, I'm always right, I'm never wrong. This kind of went on and it made it really hard for them to ever compromise. So bringing this back to what I was explaining at the very beginning is it possible here Pluto in the first house Scorpio Risings that from a young age you learned how to read people as a way to protect and defend yourself. Maybe you have this attitude of, I've seen it all before because I've lived through it. I've went through those chapters and I can pinpoint those exact emotions associated with those chapters. Essentially, you learn that very few people are to be trusted and if anybody ever betrays your trust, then you're the one who ends up the fool in your eyes. Therefore, you're probably someone who doesn't take life very lightly and when you make up your mind on a person, on a decision, on a goal, on an aspiration, that's it, you're locked in and there's no swaying your opinion there's no confusion on the matter either. And so in this respect, you can be extremely stubborn, both to your benefit and to your detriment. And you also know how to preserve your energy until you need to use it. Same could be said about your emotional world, whereby which you are so, so good at keeping yourself controlled even in the face of danger, crisis and urgency. And perhaps you learned how to do this due to the forces that were outside of your control as a child. Or maybe sometimes you put on a poker face in front of others as a way to show how you refuse to be dominated by others. It kind of feeds into the whole power play, remember? Maybe you even view showing or expressing emotions as a sign of weakness because 
this is what you had to do, right? You had to do these things in order to survive, in order to protect. Suggesting that you controlling or preserving your emotions is a coping strategy. And so you go on living your life and as you're presented with new situations and people that you meet, it's further reinforced onto you the importance of remaining in control, the importance of keeping yourself to yourself or keeping your very intimate private information to yourself. So following on from this point, what you might find as you grow and evolve over time is that you go through very distinctive endings and new beginnings. So for example, this could be the ending of a relationship where you had no other choice but to cut your losses. So this relationship could have been explosive, violent, toxic. It could have been really disruptive, it's just very strong. Or this could even be the beginning of a new relationship that is very, very obvious, that it's official and it's committed. It's like this whole attitude of, well, what are we? Are we doing this? Are you committing? Okay, done, yes. Then that way, you know where you stand. Though another example could be the ending of a job where maybe you've been made redundant or you've been fired before or it's been that that company was very, very corrupt. Or this could be the beginning of a new job where you started in a position where you're a supervisor right off the bat. You get that power role, so to speak, from the very beginning. And the same can be said when it comes to your living situation as well and just other really obvious new stages throughout your life. But essentially, it's you, Pluto, in the first house, Scorpio rising individuals who experience what feels like destructive and disastrous, disastrous moments only to be catapulted into what feels like a resurrection of some kind, also known as the death and rebirth process. As you kind of go in and out of all these many huge transformations. And seeing as this is the first house, perhaps the same could be said in association with your physical appearance. Suggesting that the transformations or the changes you make towards how you appear, they're very sharp and they're very noticeable. They are just so apparent, possibly even threatening to others who feel intimidated by you or shocking to those who simply just didn't see it coming. In this respect, there really is a layer of mystery to you. And I also think that this shows the extremities or how extreme you can be by nature when it comes to your personality and your overall demeanor. Meaning that you can take a certain look, such as a makeup look, for example, that you like to do, or should I say obsessively like to do, or another example, this could be a pair of shoes that you like to wear constantly, but whatever the case may be, it's you who will take that look or whatever it is to its very, very limits, almost to its furthest point. And then what you may do is you decide, I no longer want to do that anymore. And so you go to the other extreme or you possibly even just destroy it all together. Now, like I said, you can be pretty obsessive throughout the process. So obsessive that you might even come up against competition resulting in potential feelings of jealousy or resentment, such as a friend getting that new car or dress that you've been obsessing over for a while. Then again, you'll most likely not let on. Remember, like I said at the beginning, you're all about depth. You're all about not wanting to appear shallow. And so when these feelings come, you're really, really good at hiding them because hey, by showing these emotions outwardly, then others have some sort of power over you. And it's you who wants to remain powerful, right? Okay then, Cosmic Warriors. So that concludes my video on the power, control, and rebirth of those of you who have Pluto in your first house and also for those of you who have a Scorpio rising within your birth chart. Now, if you do happen to have any of these placements, please let us know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below but with all that being said thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing and if you would like to see 
more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed then go right ahead and click that subscribe button and also make sure you give this video a like remember and i will be back with another video very very soon bye